Bennett and Johnson Insurance Agency in Alma is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. This week's edition of the Red Raider Coaches Show. My name is Brent Johnson, along with head football coach Keith Goss. Coach, how you doing? Doing all right. Good, good. <laughs> I ask that same question every week. week, and you give me basically the same answer. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. All right. Uh, well, we got a, uh, a show for you this uh, today. We're going to be uh, talking about uh, we missed last week. Uh, we had some scheduling issues. Coach wasn't feeling good one day, and it just it just didn't work out. So, uh, and that that's sometimes that happens. Um, it was the open week as well. That's certainly that's that's, that's correct. Um, but we're going to talk about the previous game. We're going to look forward to uh, tomorrow night's game. And, uh, and but first of all, I want to mention a couple of key sponsors. Uh, these platinum sponsors that uh, you know uh, send us money. You know to to fund the program. Um, again, from food to to other you know, all kinds of stuff uh, helps. Uh, the big board, you know, we're still excited about uh, yeah. the Jumbotron and those types of things that these guys have uh, put forth a major effort uh, to, to help provide, uh, again, our, our program. And not just football, and I'm getting off on a little tangent here, but you know, those types of things will benefit uh, that football field, you know, where we play soccer and all different levels. Graduation and, certainly will be a big deal. Uh, community events and those types of things. Bacon County Hospital System, boy, that's a, uh, they've been a, a staple especially these last 18 to 20, 22 months or so that we've been uh, going through the pandemic. I want to thank uh, the hospital as a whole, specifically their staff, for, for doing the great job they do uh, providing the medical services to our community uh, and, again, also chipping in and helping um, the football program. But um, just uh, the true heroes uh, of, of the last almost two years now. There, um, there's no doubt the, uh, the things they've had to overcome uh, in that that setting, what, what they've had to deal with with COVID, uh, what they've done in our community to help our community, uh, it's, it's been amazing. And they've taken care of several of our, our ball team players. Uh, they've become ill and injured and that sort of thing. So uh, again, we just want a, a special, special shout out to our the Bacon County uh, Hospital System um, for being a part of our program. Um, and then finally uh, today, Industrial Forge. And boy, that's another uh, big shout out to, to that industry. Um, Mr. Ted Murray, although he has passed away, uh, his legacy still remains um, in our school system, in our community, um, for his generosity over the years. And uh, he has made sure uh, that, that his company will continue to do that. Uh, we've been reassured that and uh, we, we we're thankful for, uh, for all those involved um, uh, with Industrial Forge and, and, and again their ability uh, to give generously to to not only, again, football, um, but to other programs and other uh, things in our community. So, again, a, a big shout out to Industrial Forge and, once again, Bacon County Hospital System. Coach, we have been off a couple weeks. Uh, we come off of a homecoming week, uh, which, you know, we generally we're all pretty excited about. Uh, sometimes it can be a nightmare for, for football coaches. Uh, from, from time to time, just the, the homecoming events, the, the parades, and, and working that around practices, and then doing, uh, you know, all the things the kids are pulled one direction or another. I will say the, the um, you know, some of the, some of the school events were, were very spirited because it was the first time that, you know, that we got a new pep rally uh, wow. in two years or so. so the kids seem to really enjoy it, uh, so you know I think it was ended up being a great thing. Yeah, we speaking of the pep rally, um, you know it's uh, we were supposed to have it outside, and unfortunately it was it rained the night before. Everything was soaking wet, 
uh, and the fact that we were having it before lunch, you know, nothing was, the field was going to be wet, the stands, and so we made, the, the admin made the decision to bring it inside to the gym, um, and man, that place was rocking. Uh, that's the loudest, and like you said, it's been almost two years since we've had a pep rally, and uh, all four grades were really into it. A lot of times the freshman class is really quiet, and even the sophomores, they're a little, they just don't get into it like the gym. It's usually the, between the juniors and the seniors, the competition, who's the loudest, and this, that, and the other. Um, but it was very spirited, um, and I, I was very, very proud and pleased. Yeah, it was it was one of the better ones I, I've ever seen or, or been around uh, in my time. So it was it was it was good energy. Yeah. Well, that uh, that day of celebration led to uh, that evening's game as we hosted Tattano County, uh, a, a, a Region Two, Three A. Yes. Region Two, Three A opponent. Uh, we faced them last year. We went over to their place. Um, and and had a had a, a good showing, um, and then you know they come here uh, that Friday night, uh, bringing a, a, an improved team. Uh, um, no, there's there's no doubt uh, they were they were much improved. Um, their coach over there has done a, done a great job. Um, those kids have, have bought into their system, and uh, their quarterback, um, you know, yeah, he was a threat. He was he's pretty sporty. Yeah. Hey. He's going to give, they're going to give some teams in their region a little more trouble than they have in the past few years. Uh, I fully expect them to be um, more than likely number three team out of that region and, and have a chance once they get to the playoffs. Yeah. Um, they've had, a, you know, guys that you can tell from last year, this year, they, they were committed. Uh, they continued to work in the weight room and stay with the program. And when you do those things, uh, you know, success follows. Do you know that coach personally? I do. Uh, we both usually work at the GACA All-Star Game together. Uh, we will again this winter. Um, it is, uh, he's a good guy, yeah. a good person. Um, so he, uh, you know, I talked to him before the game, after the game. Um, you know, he could tell, you know, that, that we were missing some pieces sure. from the year before. Um, and so, you know, he, he planned accordingly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, again, homecoming, big crowd. We, uh, we did crown uh, homecoming king and queen before the game. Matter of fact, uh, the king is here with us uh, behind the camera today, uh, Keandre Young. A man of many skills. Many skills. Um, Keandre unfortunately sustained an injury, season ending injury. He'll have some sort of surgery to take care of that, hopefully, get him back on his feet. Uh, and preparing to play some football at the next level um, come this time next year. So we're thoughts and prayers are with him. Um, and then uh, Tara uh, Brinson, sorry, Tara Brinson was our homecoming queen. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Well, Coach, uh, it was kind of a rough start for us for the homecoming game. Um, yeah, we never, uh, never really got uh, established uh, offensively. We put our defense in, in bad positions very early. Uh, you know, we had two turnovers uh, to start the game. Uh, with We had a kickoff that was returned fairly deep, and the defense held them to a field goal. Um, then our first two possessions ended up in turnovers, and I think one of them was a pick six. Uh, so we're starting off in a hole that, that is, you know, you know, 17 nothing, uh, And, you know, those are things we have to clean up. Um, obviously, we can't. You know, we have to do a better job protecting the football uh, and the meshes with the quarterbacks. We use two quarterbacks, uh, or have used two quarterbacks. And, you know, obviously we need to spend more time uh, on our meshes between both those guys with the running backs. Uh, you know, we, we mishandled that one down there early. Uh, and then, you know, we threw an interception that, that really we tried, we tried to force in there instead of uh, – you know, just throwing it away if it wasn't there and living for the next play. So, um, you know, but those are things that, that we know we can work on. Right. And we'll continue to work on them. So, um, you know, once we got in that hole, we did come back and, and hit them with a big play and, and got a touchdown on the board. Um, but they were able to continue to drive and score and yeah. uh, really didn't, didn't slow them down much from that point. Yeah. Well, and, and when a team at any level – you get down 14, 17, 20 points, it takes you out of your, your game plan. You've got to try to do some things maybe you, you didn't necessarily want to do or 
or, feel, or have to do uh, like throw. And, then, yeah. and you throw, there's there's probably a 50% chance in high school football that it's going to be dropped, overthrown, or something, and stop clock stops, and, and you know, three up, uh, uh, three up, three down, right. as in baseball. Um, um, you uh, know, it's one of those things that, that uh, you know, we just didn't have a, a ton of success throwing it. And uh, it led to, to stopping the clock and, and, you know, just kind of making the situation worse. Yeah. So uh, I will say, you know, we did everything we could to keep fighting to get back yeah. into it. Yeah. And that part important's obvious, you know, we never gave up. No. And, and uh, but it does make the score look worse when it doesn't work out. Right. Well, you know, when you look at the school board going into halftime, you know, it's like uh, it was tough uh, to see. Um, and then... But more importantly, you know, coming back out, I saw some CLC saw some young players trying to make some plays. No, there's there's a lot of freshmen and sophomores that are getting a lot of time right now, um, and we're going to be better for it as the season goes along and in the future. Uh, those kids have the right mindset, and they're going to keep doing the right things to be become successful. Yeah, so that, they definitely didn't quit. Um, you know, kept again playing hard, uh, and again give. Uh, Tattle, uh, a lot of credit uh, for, as you mentioned earlier, the coach done a great job uh, continuing to build that program. Um, they're in a pretty tough region themselves. Uh, you got two two top teams in the state, one the defending state champion, and then now you've got another team in Apple County who's been solid for years, but this year might be their year. It, it very well could be um, the, the game between them at the end of the season. Um, you know, that's going to be probably something that's you know, of a semi or quarterfinal caliber matchup yeah. if they're both healthy at that point. Yeah. All right, so we'll uh, change gears um, this week um, as we will focus on our first region game That's right. uh, of the season. And this is where it, it's a new season. It's where it, this where is, it all this begins. Is, this is where it all begins as far as, you know, getting into the playoffs and, you know, where our focus is now. Um, obviously, you know, we've had – a ton of things to overcome and adversity to overcome uh, thus far in the season. Um, and our kids understand that. Uh, they continue to work. We've had, we've had some, some really good practices this week. Uh, you know, with that being said, you know, Jeff Davis is a good, good football program. Oh, yeah, by the way, Jeff Davis is coming to town. That's J.D., Hazelhurst. Um, <laughs> they are, uh, you know, I think they're ranked a top ten team in the state. Uh, They've had a good season thus far, um, and that you know, I think they have you know four or five players that, that have offers at this point. Um, so it, it's going to be a tall task, but you know we game plan for them, we've practiced hard for them, and uh, we're going to do the things we think we can do to be successful. Well, one of those you know, I, from from watching them over the course of the last couple of years, specifically with this new coach, um, we pretty much know what they're going to try to do on offense. Oh yeah, that's, that's just, just and it's you know what they're going to do on defense. Yeah. Um, it's not you know, it's not a mystery. Yeah, they're going to line up on offense, and you just you can come and try to stop us. Right. You know, uh, three yards in a cloud of dust. They do have some guys that can pop it 40, 50, 60 yards as well. Um, but they don't. But what basically what I'm saying is they don't throw it too often. <laughs> uh, no, and, and their and their quarterback. Um, you know, he's more of a runner than a thrower. Mm -hmm. Not that he hasn't completed some good balls down down the field, and they have a a, a pretty a pretty dang good receiver. Um, number seven, uh, he's yeah. sporty. Yeah, he's a good a good looking athlete. Um, and so, you know, it, it'll be uh, they have a guy out there that they can get it to. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll you know we always have to to prepare. Yeah. Uh, we know it's. We know it's in their scheme. We know what they what they do. Uh, we've watched all the film. Um, it's just you know lining up, executing what we, we feel like we can do against them, and making the plays. Now is it a what? It's not a wing T, is it? They they base. Uh, that's where it all bases from. Okay. Now though they've done more this year to break their formation, as far as uh, doing things out of double wing. Um, doing things with more motion. Is he an under center or a shotgun? Primarily under center. Under center, that's what I remembered. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's the, the quarterback this year is definitely more of a run threat, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, adds another phase to the wing tee offense. Yeah, uh, that just makes the option even more 
optional. <laughs> right. Um, you know, and, and they, um, yeah. you know, people that, that run the wing tee, if they if they can get in uh, and do some things where they, they run an option game to the weak side, uh, it really does help their, their offensive scheme. Yeah. And defensively, uh, what, 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 uh, how are they going to line up against this coach? Um, their, their base, uh, four, four, cover three. Um, you know, they, they keep it in front of them. They come up and make tackles. Um, defensively, uh, you know, you're more than likely going to get a three technique strong and a, and a shade weak or a one to the weak side, which is, you know, football talk for where they line up across the front. Right. Um, you know, as you motion, their linebackers bump with motion. And uh, so, we, I mean, we've scouted them out. We've worked it. We've had two weeks yeah. to, to work on it. Um, those are things they, they do um, and how they adjust. Now, I hate to say it, I, uh, but uh, their coach, he's, he's, he's done a pretty good job with their program since he's been there. A really good job, actually. And he's a pretty good guy, too. Yeah, Lance does a good job. Uh, and, and me and him, you know, we talk on the phone quite a bit. Um, a lot of the coaches in the area do. I know a lot of the, the fans, they, you know, everybody hates this person in this county and everybody hates <laughs> But um, at the end of the day, we're all trying to build our programs, build the best product we can, and build young men in the community. Yeah. And so there's times that we, that we talk to uh, each other about, you know, how to improve things. And bounce ideas off sure. each other. I know they they have over there started their own wall of fame after they saw what what we did yeah. and did and so they thought that was you know something really good to to pull the community together and so they saw what we did and they put their own spin on it mm -hmm. and uh, that stuff's great. Yeah, uh, it, it does nothing but make um, all of us better. That's right. So, um, but no, he's uh, Lance is a good guy. Um, he, he works hard um, and you know gets him prepared. Well, what are we going to look like uh, tomorrow night offensively, uh, Coach? Any any adjustments? I know we uh, we've, we we're going to have a few wrinkles in, but uh, we're just not going to talk about yeah. it on TV because <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I I'm pretty sure uh, you know everybody can pull this up they yeah they can on YouTube it's, they don't have to have an NFHS account to, to, to watch this so, so um, but no there, there's some there's some different wrinkles for tomorrow night um, some things that, that um, we've made adjustments and, and looked at some some different ways to be more successful okay well I, I usually don't you know we don't talk specifically about players a whole lot or I don't um, but I just know this young man who who's been out since the spring all summer long nursing a foot injury and then he had some uh, personal issues, uh, illness, family, this, that, and the other, and he just come back to school a couple of weeks ago and just rejoined the team. That's uh, Xavier Williams. Smoke. How's, how's he he's getting his football legs? Because pound for pound, he may be the strongest and fastest kid uh, he's, on our team. Pound for pound, he's the strongest and fastest kid in the school. Yeah. Um, but it's when you've been out for a leg injury and you've been out, you know, with some of the other things he's had to, to face, personal, family-wise, sickness-wise, um, it takes a little while to get sure. back up to speed. And, and we're in that process. Uh, it's good to have him back. Yeah. Um, he's he's doing some things to help the team, and, and you know, he'll be playing majority snaps at linebacker. He's going to play some some linebacker for us. Uh, you know, we'll move him around a little bit according to where we feel like. Formationally, he can help us yeah. stop what they do. Um, but, you know, he's going to play some inside linebacker at times. He's going to play outside linebacker and set the edge at times because uh, he's one that's strong enough if something is run at him to set the edge. Gotcha. Um, and when you're playing the wing tee, uh, they're blocking down. Yeah. you got to come and fit the edge and cancel it out. That's how you wad it up and force it to bounce, and then you scrape to the play. Jeff Davis, when they were on their wing tee, they want to hit it as downhill as possible because they try to run it more of a power style. Like between the tackles type deal? So you'll see them, uh, you know, they try to kick most everything and turn up tight gotcha. and get downhill. Where some some teams treat it different ways according to how they formation. But well, that tells me they got some pretty good offensive linemen inside that they think they can. I, I know for that. sure they have one that's committed to George Southern. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously he's talented. Yeah. 
um, playing, you know, Division One offensive line. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's a few more on the team that have fielded other offers. I think that that receiver has an offer from Kennesaw State. Um, and I know there's a couple others that are, you know, being looked at. Yeah. All right, well, Coach, uh, we want to encourage uh, Raider Nation to come out tomorrow night. Again, we, we're fortunate to have another home game as, as we host Jeff Davis. Uh, we have another home game next week as right. we'll be hosting uh, the Toombs County Bulldogs. And then we'll go out and go on the road, and that, that would be to Swainsboro, Swainsboro, I believe. And then back, at, back home, East Lawrence, East and then Lawrence. we have Vida Day Vida away, Vida. and that'll wrap it up uh, for the – Regular season. Then there's a there's a, an additional week in the season. I think it's an off week right. for us. That last official week of the season. Um, so we do have four straight weeks of, of region play. Uh, two at home, one away. Five. Five. Excuse me. Yeah, because we're just starting. Uh, so anyway, come come join us tomorrow night. Uh, at this local game again. It's just Jeff Davis. Uh, come out. Let's, let's be loud and proud. And um, I've always said Mike Wheeler. A little plug for Mr. Mike Wheeler and. Uh, Country Financial and his son uh, John, they uh, do a lot for the community as well. But Mike always said we got to beat them in marbles, basket weaving, underwater quilt making. It don't matter, much less sports. So uh, let's come out and, and do what we can to, to support our Raiders uh, as they take the field tomorrow night versus the Jeff Davis Yellow Jackets. Again, most importantly, as we begin our region schedule. So. You know, what's happened in the past doesn't matter anymore. It's, it's what uh, these next five games is what will determine um, if we get in the playoffs or not. And that's, that's, right. that's, that's, the, that's the key. That's why we're here is to make the playoffs. Um, so, Coach, I appreciate you joining us this morning. Raider Nation, once again, please for you to come out tomorrow night. If you can't for whatever reason, uh, you can uh, watch us live on the NFHS Network, powered by Play on Sports, brought to you by BCTV Red Raider Broadcasting. And you can actually tune in. I'm give the radio uh, guys a plug. You can tune in to 104.3 station right here from Allen, Georgia. Um, that'll be broadcasting as well. So once again, thank you for joining us on the Red Raider Coaches Show.